<laughs> oh, do you know, I proper loved you out there. I thought you did such a great job. Yeah, you were just a, it's fabulous. It's just an extraordinary experience. Mm. It was nothing like I thought it was going to be. Mm. And it's something that I can really recommend to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost a stone. Did you? Yeah. A stone I couldn't yeah. lose. How on earth did you... Because when I was in there, I think you had it really lucky. You got fed all the time. We literally didn't get fed all the time. We starved. It didn't seem yeah. like any of you actually starved Well, I think, I think that from what I gather, what really happened was that everybody got together as a team. Yeah. Mm. There was no... Nothing was going on that they weren't all going to be trying to get everything they could for each other. Yeah. So we, we had rice and beans in the morning, rice and beans at lunchtime, and then... It, and more or less every night, one enough to have a meal. Yeah. I have to say that the meal sometimes left a little bit, bit to be desired mm. because, in actual fact, you know, there's certain elements of food there that you really think, I could do without this. And then you get all these extraordinary vegetables and nobody knows what they are. <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> chop them all up and throw in a frying pan with ordinary cooking oil with no salt, no condiments, none yeah. of that things. I was going to ask you that. it's like a lot that. of stuff so that's come out the bottom. it's plain and that's why you still weight. It's plain. So what you eat mm. is enough to sustain you for three weeks and, and you, I it. lost 10 kilos. The Jungle Book diet. There you go. Yeah. The Jungle Book <laughs> diet. What, what was it. your hardest you bit? Because the, the only time I remember seeing you really break down was when Jordan left. And yeah, you... That... It was like your son had left I know, left I know. You. Well, the thing... The, what, it, it's really interesting what occurs in that, because everything, you know, everything's heightened. Everything, mm. like, all the tension, all the pressure, everything's heightened. But what happens is you sort of accept that that is the status quo. Mm. You, you're in that state. Yeah. And I have to say that when he let, when he was called out like that, yeah. it just hit me like a train. It was like, woof! And, of course, afterwards, you, you analyse it, but hang on a minute, this is a game. You're going to see him in a day yeah. or two or three yeah, days' time. Yeah. But it's like you're losing somebody. It's really well, extraordinary. It's so intense, isn't it? Yeah. You don't normally get to spend that much time with no, people. No, you know, and that, that's it. It's like day and night, 24 hours. Yeah. But you didn't get on with Martin, did you? Yeah, well, the thing... It, interesting, we, we spoke about this afterwards, and I, I think, you know, as two mature individuals, we didn't really handle it that well. We both got caught off on the wrong foot, you know what I mean? Are you friends now? Well, I mean, you know, we, we certainly parted as friends. You know, we're not... I mean, I'm not, I'm not somebody... I've, you know, I've been an actor for 40 years, right? Sound like a politician I, right now. Well, <laughs> I, I, work, I work with large groups of people regularly in a way situations. Yeah. I certainly don't speak to them every day. We're, you know, one is in contact if you want to be in contact. But in terms of bad blood, absolutely none. And did it, did it hurt you? Like, did it hurt you that you were being called a bully? Because I did kind of, like, focus on that, because there wasn't much else bad to focus on. Well, I, I think that was sort of what came about. I mean, when my kids talked to me afterwards, they said, Christ, if he thinks he was bullying you, you should hear him... They should hear him when he's, <laughs> when he's having a go at us. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, if that's the way you want to interpret it, it was like... Aah. But we, we were talking about, you know, Christmas and mm. families all getting together and this sort of stuff. If you can't even get families who are supposed to love each other to sit <laughs> in a room together for 24 hours over Christmas, yeah. how on earth do you expect people who don't know each other to sit in a jungle for nearly a month and not have the odd little moment where you rub up the wrong way. Exactly. It's a perfectly I mean, normal that was thing. It, it does make great TV. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. There are, there, and, and the point is that what happens is you, whether you like it or not, you are involved in a game. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And that's what I think I lost sight of. And I think it becomes my reality, you know, because once you've, once you've lived away from home for extended periods... So I spent two years in the oil fields in, de in, in Libya. You know, when you're living with a bunch of people very intensely yeah. together, and it, it, and you it, can't it the pressure's get on up. With everyone. You can't. You can't get on possible. with everyone. It's like celebrity big brother, isn't it? Do. It's like celebrity big brother. When you're in that environment, exactly. you lose track of reality. That's and being that in is there, reality. you've obviously had lots of experiences in your life because obviously I've been in there as well. You've got lots of time to think about things. Did you come out? thinking, I'm going to do this different or that different, or did you learn something different about yourself? I think what it was, I began much more to understand how intensely all those people I was with were connected to their families. Mm. Because that's it's families and food, that's really all you talk about. Mm, yeah. And they, they, all of them, and it began to make me appreciate more what I've got. You know, I've got yeah. a wonderful life, and it made, but it made me appreciate it more, mm. being in, 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 in isolation like that. And, and those moments when, you know, you, you, you literally do focus I'm just thinking about your family, mm. that's all. Because there are, it looks as if, you know, the way it's presented on television, everybody's sitting around all the time. Or yeah. they ain't, right? <laughs> There's plenty of time you're lying in your hammock or lying in your bunk or lying on the floor or whatever, and you're on your own. 
and and that I found was was really what I appreciated. Did, did I, you? I, I loved it. You, well, you were met by your your lovely new partner. Yeah. Um, did you reevaluate re that at all? Did it make you really appreciate yeah. her when I you think, came out? Well, I was... think the thing is that I was in such a sort of a stable situation emotionally with my family, my extended family, with Marie, everything that. The one thing I didn't think about, I did, no worries at home. No worries yeah. at home at all. It was a glorious feeling. Mm. And, and, and so I was able to focus on what I was what doing, doing, where yeah. I was. And, and, you and forget that people really... are going there and sometimes life at home's not rosy. Uh, th th that must I tell be you, hell. I, I, there's no way, no way could I have contemplated doing that if everything wasn't stable. For more Loose Women action, click here. And I'd subscribe if I were you. It's totally free and it means you'll be kept up to date with new videos and exclusive YouTube content.